Okay, well this is episode two then. Episode two. Episode two, two, two. Um, hello everybody, I'm Ren. I'm Scott. And this is stitchandtravel.com. We are outside of our box today. Um, we're always outside of our box. Um, today we are at Dangerfield State Park and we just are coming back from um, a scouting trip and we decided that this would be a great place to stop and have some lunch and shoot a quick video. Yeah. And if you're in Northeast Texas, um, you should stop by Dangerfield State Park. I love really all of the Texas state parks. I haven't found anyone that didn't have its beauty and its appeal. This isn't exactly my favorite state park, but it is absolutely, I think, the prettiest of the parks. He says that about almost all of them. No, I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> um, pretty much what we wanted to talk about today was um, the yurt thing um, and how the next, the next few months are going to go. You know, basically a yurt is a round uh, tent that the Mongolian people used. Um, it's called a gear if it has two posts in the middle holding the roof up. It's called a yurt if there's not. And uh, these were developed uh, on the, the Gobi Desert and the steppes of uh, Asia for hundreds if not thousands of years so they've really kind of uh, worked out the details on these mm -hmm. and uh, they can be well insulated they're good suitable for uh, all kinds of climates and they're extremely stable in harsh weather yes um, essentially you know we've talked about for quite a while that we wanted to get full-time out in an RV uh, but we don't actually have an RV part of the problem is we're so hooked on the traveling part uh, that we spend all our money traveling all the time and we're not saving enough to get the RV. Uh, so what we decided we're going to do, as you know from the last video, is we're going to uh, not sign our, renew our lease uh, in May of 2017, and which is about six to seven months away. Yeah. And we are going to build a yurt in that period of time and I'm going to start putting in for park hosting positions and once we get one he'll stay at his job and we'll be paying rent to ourselves we'll put it in the savings account that way we are we're saving money and hopefully within a year year and a half maybe even two we will have enough to buy um, a used RV so we're looking at having you know no utility bills other than our cell phone uh, and no rent right. uh, for a year, year and a half, and that's going to really let us sock the money back. Also, with camp hosting, we're going to be tied down somewhat on weekends, so we'll probably travel less. And if we're out at the parks all the time anyway, then hopefully the drive to travel constantly will be a little bit less, because we'll already be out in the uh, wilderness out right, in the parks. Right, right. Now, the way that we're planning on doing this is, at, as you know, we have been uh, getting the apartment ready for this. I mean... Um, we've moved our living room recliners into the bedroom and we moved the two beds over so that we have plenty of space and we're living in that bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen. That leaves the living room open so that we can start um, sorting and purging and getting ready because the rest of this month and December is going to be Let's get the living room done. Let's sell the things that we're not going to use. And January 1st, let's start on the yurt. We want to start paring down to the point where we only keep the stuff that's going with us. Um, we'll empty that living room out, and that's going to become our workspace. Uh, and one of the nice things about a yurt uh, is... You know, it's kind of a cross between a house and a tent, but it's fairly portable. One person can put one up or take one down in about an hour, hour and a half. Two people can do it easier. Um, it's stable in the wind. It can be well insulated. And it doesn't require a lot of complex tools to make. I mean, you can you can get by with, with pretty much a drill and a saw uh, for the woodwork. Now, we may end up... Uh, 
hiring someone to do the actual canvas work, or we may have to buy ourselves a, uh, a heavy-duty sewing machine to do the canvas work ourselves. We haven't uh, we haven't looked at the economics of that yet. Um, I don't really like to sew. I thought I did for a while, but I really don't care about sewing. So I moved on my sewing machine, which would not have handled canvas work. And um, so we're either going to have to um, find someone who can do it uh, or do one ourselves. And um, I'm not really looking forward to the doing ourselves for the canvas. But uh, first we're going to start with the, um, with the frame and the walls. So we've got a few months, uh, just a month, about a month and two weeks to get prepared. So this is what we've been doing so far, the rearranging. Yeah. And that's where we're at. We, we've, we've concluded that living in the, the bedroom space, which will actually, is currently going to be slightly, the bedroom that we're in now is going to be a bit smaller than what we'll end up with. We're, we're looking at this point at a 14 foot diameter yurt. Uh, but of course, uh, the current space we're in doesn't include our bathroom and our kitchen. Uh, so I think it's going to be a little crowded, but I think we can make it work. Right. So, if you're going to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area from January to March, if you want to help with building this yurt, if you have any ideas, if you have any tips or suggestions, please let us know. You can comment down in the comments below. Uh, you can contact us at our email address, Stitch and try that again, Stitch in Traveler at gmail.com. Um, I'll have it posted here on the screen, mm -hmm. and um, or you can go to our website, stitchandtravel.com, and you can uh, make some comments. Now, we do ask, uh, we're trying to build our, our subscriber base. Please share these with your friends. If you have somebody that is interested in tiny living spaces, yurts, traveling, share these videos with Outdoors them. Outdoors parks. Yeah. We really would appreciate it. We're doing this as an outside our box video, uh, but we should be starting a new series on yurt living, which will include uh, sharing with you the design phase, the building, uh, you know what goes right, what goes wrong, and then the actual moving into, uh, erecting, and uh, learning how to live in one of these. And uh, it should be interesting. Yes, so please, um, join us. We would love to see you uh, taking part and and just being there with us. We really enjoy having you guys around. So we hope you'll join us for our journey. Yes, definitely. New phase! <laughs> so thanks a bunch. And remember, get out and live life outside your box.